Now, if you happen to hear a bunch of noise going on occasionally in the background as I'm doing the narration here, well, it's because one of my neighbors is getting a tree pruned or removed or something, and there's a big heavy-duty chipper running, and chainsaws going on, and yeah, it's pretty rackety at times. Right now, it's okay. Anyway, I thought I'd just let you know so that you're not thinking my furnace is on the blink. Now, when Uncle Jake brought his, brought his clock over the other day, he told me that the uh, bearings were getting elongated, or he had been told that the bearings were being elongated by the shafts, and I knew exactly what he was talking about. In other words, as the, bear, as the shaft turns, it sort of wears as a bit of a groove. Well, I'll show you. Now, what you're looking at here is a rather poor drawing, not necessarily to scale, of the back of the movement. You're looking at the back plate. You know where it says made in Germany on the bottom? <laughs> Even though the clock was made in Holland? Anyway, yeah, so you got the shaft holes. Let's zoom in really close on one of those holes. Now, imagine that when they first manufacture this thing, the shaft hole is the same size or just a little bit bigger than the shaft itself. Well, there has to be room for the oil to get in, right? Anyway, as the shaft is turning, it's pushing more on one place than the other. And if the lubrication dries out, it actually wears its way in a sort of elongated pattern in one direction. I have actually seen one where the hole was twice as long as it was wide. It had worn that much. Well, about what you see here. Maybe even a little worse. I'm just using a little bit of isopropyl alcohol here. It'll sort of help to clean up the ends of the shafts and I'll be able to see things just a little bit better. Now this is going to sound kind of funny, but there is wear, and that's good news. And it's good news because it means that Uncle Jake was not taken for a ride by somebody wanting to sell him a new movement or something. I'm going to slip on the macro lens and see if I can't just show you here. You're not going to be able to see it as good as I can, and it's nothing like what I showed you in the drawing, but there is play there. Okay, I'm going to try and show you this one right here. It shows a little bit of play. So does this one. Well, we'll zoom in on this one here. Now this is about as close as I can get without uh, fooling around with a microscope and put in the, the microscope adapter on the camera and all that kind of stuff, which generally is a, ends up being a frustrating experience. But you can see here that there, there is play. Now, it's my unprofessional opinion that this movement probably had a few more years of life in it. But on the other hand, who knows? If it was giving Uncle Jake problems, well, maybe there's something else wrong that I don't know about. But anyway, you can see that. Now, one of the viewers was suggesting, why not take and mount the dial board on this side? And that way, the uh, slot for the pendulum sh shaft will be in the right place. Now, at first I thought that was a pretty good idea, but then I've got this uh, little hanging bracket here to contend with. Um, and also, and mainly, it's already grooved for the back to slide in place. So, uh, uh, I was going to do that, and then I thought, you know, that sounds like a good idea. And, but when I looked at it close, well, not only that, these pieces right here, right here they're glued in pretty good so let me just i probably end up wrecking the thing trying to change it so i'm not going to do that now i'm just going to go ahead and cut this out down here let's have a close look at that okay this is still dangerously close i think uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to 
go like this and like this and probably like this maybe I won't have to take quite as much out but it, it'll probably look better if I take it out and then okay maybe go a sixteenth of an inch into this right here um, I know what I'm talking about it's kinda hard to describe I hate to butcher this nice little case but on the other hand if I don't it's not gonna work okay that's pretty near exactly half an inch maybe a smidgen more Okay, and then I'm going to come in from there, and from there. Yeah, something like that. Now, I am actually going to want to sand this out. You know, come in a little bit more this way. I should have maybe been more this way. Well, I'll be sanding this larger anyway with the uh, oscillating spindle sander, so. Now this doesn't have to be real tight, just keep it from falling off. You know, looking at this, there's such a small little part that I'm going to be cutting out. I could almost sand the entire thing out, but I may as well try and cut out as much as I can. Well, looks like I'm going to have a little touch-up to do there. Mind you, this is the bottom. Nobody's going to be seeing it anyway. But that's not the point. Now, I know I didn't show it, but I just went ahead and I cut this other little piece out with a jigsaw. All right. Now for the oscillating spindle sander. Good thing that most of my stuff is on wheels. Anyway, bet you can hardly wait to see this thing go, right? That's gonna have to be tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.